Well, hello laser lovers. Here we are once again. I decided to do another video to do show you some uh, updates that I've done. Obviously, the control panel is one of them. Um, mounted this little fella up here, which is working very nicely as well. Uh, what have we got here? Okay, let's have a look. Here I um, originally installed this lab lift here. Um, it was a bit wonky. I mean, it works, but I uh, decided to install this spring-loaded deal here, which has been working really nicely. This is quite a simple, this is a piece of angle aluminium and underneath this is a flat piece of so basically a piece like this sitting on the top and underneath is a flat piece of aluminium and underneath this is a spring with a bolt through it. Pretty simple method. So and this level under here is the optimal focal length for the lens. So, um, and I've also printed out these little fellas, each with a number on them. Obviously, two millimeters will fit under there, so I can place whatever here, depending on the size of it. This is actually three millimeter, but uh, for example. This slides under there. Each side, they've got four of each. And we've got different sizes here. There's obviously three in different colours, so it's a five, yeah. You know. What have we got here? Four. Different colours so you can easily identify them quickly. Uh, what else have we got? Okay, the panel. The biggest problem I had with the K40 was setting the power level. Um, and so what I did was actually change this. This is a 100 turn pot, which gives you a much better control of the, um, the power, the power control. The other original potentiometer was really wonky, you know. One, one turn, one tiny turn, and it was you go up volts. But with this one, I get to dial it right down, down to zero. And so as you gradually turn, you can really set your power level really nicely each time. I mean, it doesn't really start lasering to 0.35, I think it is. But um, most engraving I do is 5.5, five, 6, 6.5, something like that. With this type of plywood anyway. Um, and obviously lights, uh, LEDs, you know, kind of on and off, all that sort of stuff. Test fire, uh, laser on of course, you know, test fire. Um, normal power. Uh, where are we? Here, yep. Uh, temperature of the water in this little fella. All I did was drill holes directly through the top here. Remove the cover first, drill the holes, and then fed the tubes straight down inside. And the sensor wire actually runs through, and I drill the hole at the bottom side into here. I was going to place this over here, but I didn't really want water on this side of the, the control panel, you know. Uh, it's still a bit messy. I haven't really cleaned up all the wiring yet, but still working on it. There's one missing, obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hard to see with that. Yeah, here. Yeah. Um, there's a water pump and air extract, of course. This is. Oh, it's already on. Not wired up yet. Uh, air assist. For some reason this light stays on all the time, or I have a bit of a fault at the moment, but anyway, they all work, and it works nicely. This is very easily done. Um, all you need to do is source the voltage across the pot, 
you can do it with a normal digital voltmeter. So the easiest way to explain this is this is where the panel usually sits and what you want is these two connections here on the pot. So that's about it. Pretty simple. You can measure the voltage from the middle sweeper, no, the middle contact and the sweeper. And you'll get the voltage. One one side it goes opposite as you dial up, the power goes down. That's not the one you want. You want the opposite one. You want as you dial up, the voltage increases. And you obviously need a, a digital voltmeter that has its own power source because as you wind down to zero, obviously it's going to shut off. So. It has to have its own power supply. This one actually works from 5 volts to 30 volts or something. I can put a link for this below. This is very cheap. Both of these together were less than $10. So um, I found this really works well. This control you have really makes a big difference. You can set it. Well, before you had no idea really. You can take a guess at where you can mark it where it was, but this really gives you a, a readout and you know exactly where you are. So I found that very helpful. And this obviously works the, the, the normal way as well, when, it, when the laser's on. Actually, I'll set it up and I'll uh, we'll do a little print and we'll have a look. Uh, what else? That's about it for now, I guess. Everything's there, there, there. Okay, I'll set something up and I'll come back. Okay, so just for demonstration purposes, uh, all we have to do is slip these under under here to give us our correct height. Yeah, usually I use four, I can't find the other one for that. Uh, let's just set this up. 0.6 to engrave, and um, we've got to turn the laser on. Uh, we're all set here, okay, here we go. Yep. Actually, a neat thing is, I wasn't intending this to happen, but as the laser comes on, it blinks as well. Pretty cool. You can actually also adjust the power if it's too much. Down, let's take it down to 5.5 as, as it's going. I haven't got the extractor on the moment. I have it. As it is, it's on. So, as you can see, everything's working lovely. So I just wanted to give you guys a bit of an update what's going on lately and at the end of the video I'll place a few things I've been working on. Um, if you want to fast forward, end it, finish, whatever you want to do. Uh, and I'll uh, just take a look. Thanks guys, uh, enjoy and um, see you later. One more thing I forgot to mention. This is uh, a cut out of first um, acrylic, and um, it has a black. I just used a black paper on the back, so you can see the nice writing. Actually, I have the lights on inside here, LEDs, and that light transmits through there. As you see, I'm going to put it down. 
the light coming through the LEDs is coming through the, the acrylic at the top here and actually lighting them up so it works really nicely it lights everything up pretty cool